Alright, so turn 1. As you saw with my Pretender, I am taking a Heavy Bless build, so as a result, my starting recruitment is going to be Blind Fighters to expand with, and a Blind Lord to lead them. I then invested the rest of my money into this one mercenary group, the Armored Fist of God, since I know this is a pretty strong mercenary company, um, with 25 Pikeneers and a Priest Mage leader, so they can potentially expand on their own. Meanwhile, I am blind expanding with my starting army, because I happen to start next to a Forest Mountain province, I can reasonably expect this to have slightly weaker indie types. Um, I ranged my troops to have a lore, um, so two of my medium infantry guys, or they're called light infantry but they're at least relatively uh, armored, is going to be um, set to guard the commander in order to pull arrows in. Um, then my heavy infantry are here at the front, and my medium infantry are here at the other side. Um, so the idea being that this guy is going to run back to my commander, and these guys will then um, beat up the, well, whatever infantry is in the province that we're going to be fighting against. And that's turn one. Alright, for turn two, um, almost everyone prophetized a starting uh, commander or scout. Um, Arcocephaly did a scout. Man did a royal forester, which is a scout leader. Um, Ulm did their commander. Marignan did their commander as well. TNG also did a scout. Uh, Joman did an assassin scout. Uh, Joman actually gets a ninja, which is like an assassin unit. Um, Agartha, that's me, I also prophetized my scout rather than my starting commander. And Gath prophetized their commander as well. Um, so here we had our first battle. Um, and it looks like it's a fairly easy province. Yeah, so this is just uh, militia, a couple heavy infantry, but among the weaker kind of heavy infantry with only 11 protection and then some archers. So, uh, this group here has drawn the enemy aggro. And here we fight the militia first, because they are, um, they're faster than the heavy infantry, so they get into melee before the heavy infantry does. And the archers here are shooting over at my commander here, um, who's actually relatively well protected with a kite shield and high base protection. Um, and the militia route before the heavy infantry even get into the fight. And then here, the heavy infantry are surrounded and quickly brought down. And with them dead, the Indies were out, and I take the province. So I lost only one of my light infantry units. I succeeded in my bid for the mercenary group. And um, now that I've taken this province, I have a lot of resources, so I can afford um, to spend all of my holy points on blind fighters, and also start recruiting these Agarthan light crossbows. Uh, these are going to help out my expansion by providing some actual damage to go over the top of the blind fighters. Blind fighters are extremely well protected with 21 protection and a shield, um, and then they also have superhuman combat stats and slightly better than human HP. With my N9 Bless, they'll be recovering 2 HP per round. Their weakness is their high encumbrance, which my E Bless should also help make up for. Um, their one downside is that they're magical beings, which means that they require a mage or a unit with magic leadership in order to lead them. Um, but luckily I've got my Blind Lord here, and Blind Lords are capable of leading up to 40 while still having good leadership. Uh, and they're inspirational, which means that they provide a plus one morale bonus, um, even if they're limited to two squads before they take a morale penalty. Uh, while it's definitely possible to lead Blind Fighters with just regular mage units, uh, given that I'm taking a bless and plan on blessing up my troops anyways, it's helpful to use the Blind Lords for that. Um, so these provinces here look fairly difficult. This one here is just a lot of units, uh, some of which are crossbowmen, which are capable of dealing with heavy infantry quite well. And this one has a large number of heavy cavalry and crossbows, so I'm going to need more guys in order to take on either one of these. Um, I'm going to use the Pikeneers, which I just recruited, to take on this province. I have them set at the back, set to hold an attack, um, and the Inquisitor leader is going to just cast Sermon of Courage on them a couple times. So with that and their bonus morale, um, they start at a slightly above average base, are in friendly dominion, and have a slight experience and leadership bonus. Um, so they're going to be very unlikely to rout. By setting them to hold an attack, I'll be doing the same thing, hopefully, where the uh, militias are drawn in first and the heavy infantry follow up afterwards. Here, um, this province looks a little bit bigger than the one that I already took, and it also exposes a weakness in the formation that I tried to use, but I'm going to definitely still try for this province, since it is the same type as the one that I already defeated. I thought that I could take it on without changing anything, um, but we'll see what happens there. Alright, and this is turn three. Um, so this first battle is my mercenary company expanding. And now these mercenaries, um, 
don't have quite as high protection um, as my regular troops, and they also, or as my uh, good regular troops, I should say, and they also don't have shields. So they're slightly more vulnerable to archery than my units typically are. Um, but they, this guy here is providing at least a little bit of fire support from his fireflies. I don't really have any research yet, but it's still better than nothing. Now, while they're not quite as good against archery, uh, once in melee, the pikes are actually very good defensively because they provide a repel bonus due to their length. Uh, you can see that here. Um, let's wait for the militia hit. Yeah, so you saw right there that the pikes have a very high repel value, um, which means that when, even though the militia's attack is high enough to hit the pikeneer, they're not actually um, dealing any damage to them. Instead, the pikeneer is basically deflecting their attack. And um, they also deal decent damage. Uh, pikes have five bonus damage and it's piercing, so they can deal damage even to these armored heavy infantry here. So while it's not a flawless fight, the pikeneers do uh, well enough they are able to route both the um, regular militia and the heavy infantry here. They do suffer some losses in the process, both from arrows, uh, heavy infantry hits, and a little bit of friendly fire, but I lose only two of them, so it's not bad at all, and I still have most of the squad to continue expanding. Here, however, um, well, I'll just show you what happened. Uh, this squad does successfully draw enemy aggro. Uh, you can see the archers are moving in on them, and the Light infantry are moving in on them here. Uh, and here we engage the militia with this group, but the heavy infantry, because they're still drawn to this squad, actually moves right past my guys and engages the squad with the commander. So with the commander on his own, yep, he dies. And then even though this group of guys here uh, might have been enough to actually win the battle, with the commander dead, the army is routed. Routed units, um, if they get stuck with someone um, in between them and their exit suffer a routing penalty on their attack and defense, but they're still going to try to fight. Uh, so as a result of that, I'm actually going to lose these guys here as well, just because the heavy infantry got in the way, and with the routing penalty, they're not able to put up much of a fight. One of them slips through, but most of my army is, uh, or a significant portion of my army is lost. Um, so, while I was able to kill at least the militias and a couple of the heavy infantry, most of the Indy forces are still intact. Um, I got bad omens. Given that I'm running some misfortune, it's not super unexpected um, that I would, you know, have some bad events from time to time. Um, but, you know, it's, I can deal. Uh, here, I'm going to scout this throne province, because it doesn't look all that tough. Uh, light infantry, heavy infantry, and so on aren't that bad, and while crossbows can hurt heavy infantry, uh, properly blessed blind fighters should be able to take them on. So I have my mage set to retreat, um, so he's going to go attack this just to, you know, kind of poke it, see what's going on. Meanwhile, I'm going to have my prophet and my blind fighters group up with my uh, surviving pikeneers here. Uh, my prophet is going to cast Divine Blessing, which will bless all of my blind fighters. Um, and then I'm going to use my crossbowman here, set to fire cavalry, to help whittle down the heavy cav. Uh, meanwhile, the Pikeneers are set off to one side, set to hold an attack, Well, these guys are set in the front, set to hold an attack. The idea being that the blind fighters should soak up the um, enemy aggro, um, but if not, the Pikeneers can as well, and either one should be fine. And while the Pikeneers are mercenaries, and I would uh, not mind losing them in comparison to losing the blind fighters, the blind fighters are significantly sturdier, so I'd uh, much rather have them taking the hits just in order to make sure that my expansion parties suffer as few losses as possible. And that's the turn. So this is turn four. Um, I had exchanged a few messages with Ulm, um, but here um, I decided to try again, just bunching up my infantry, sending them in. Uh, this is mostly just because I don't really value these guys. Um, so I figure if there's like you know at least a small percent chance of them taking on the province, I may as well give it a go. Um, and I had them all just arranged in one block, figuring that you know they're all just going to walk in and fight the infantry. It'll be great. Um, unfortunately, while they do manage to kill a few of them. The Indies roll extremely well on their morale checks, my guys roll comparatively poorly, and once again, they are routed. Here in um, Umidor, um, this is the Throne Province. So basically I'm just here to check to see if there are mages, and there are not. So there's a bunch of these crossbows, um, which is a little bit scary, but no wizards means that I should have no problem taking it on with a regular, if a slightly larger expansion party. Yeah, so 21 crossmen is a lot, as is 20 heavy infantry. 
but it's nowhere near as threatening as uh, some wizards would be, especially um, like the skelly spamming kind or the kind that would summon up some elementals. Here, uh, oh wow, that's a large number of heavy cavalry. Yes, this is a very tough province, but luckily I have very tough expansion parties. Uh, with my scout casting smite, he's going to potentially help deal some damage to these guys. The heavy, ca I do get first hit on the heavy cavalry, um, which helps a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, the heavy cavalry do a lot of damage in their initial attack, uh, mostly to these pikeneers. Um, this one managed to survive by taking a limb hit, which means that he didn't lose all of his HP in the process. Uh, and I think one of these guys, or yeah, one of each of the guys in this square died. You can see the smite there doing some damage. And then they do route here. Um, they, the squad has taken a significant portion of its total HP in losses, thanks to the smite, crossbows, and being partially surrounded by these pikeneers. And meanwhile, my blind fighters march forward. Slowly, because they're very slow units, but they march forward all the same. Um, now that this squad has routed, they're no longer being targeted by my crossbows, who have now switched over to this crossbow squad. So they're just firing back and forth, and eventually the pikeneers reach them, and, um, yeah, I think that they just routed because all the heavy cavalry left the field, and that triggered um, an HP route check, and their morale failed. So we've taken over this province, and um, we actually didn't lose too many guys. We only lost four pikeneers from that cavalry charge, and 16 heavy cavalry is a lot. So this was a tough province, and we took it out without problem. So here we have more heavy cavalry and crossbows, um, but as I mentioned, these uh, guys are incredible at surviving. So having them set to hold an attack at the front, they should be able to bear the brunt of the cavalry charge, and we already know that their positioning is correct to get the first hit on the heavy cavalry, as we saw. Meanwhile, these crossbows should help whittle down the heavy cavalry, and given that it's showing more crossbows than heavy cavalry, we should be okay. By um, having my guys set to hold an attack, and just being slow units in general, we should be able to draw the fight over to our side of the field, making our crossbowmen more accurate, while theirs are, more go are going to be more prone to friendly fire. Um, meanwhile, here, we are sending our second expansion party, uh, this Blind Lord and the additional crossbows, supported by these Pikeneers to take on the Throne Province. Um, I'm also bringing my scout with here as well. He'll be able to both continue providing divine blessing and smite support, and he'll also be able to claim the throne once we capture it. Uh, this uh, alchemist uh, retreated into this province right here, and I set him to site search. Um, having my first maid site searching is uh, pretty helpful. It'll help me get some early gem income going, and I'm definitely going to be able to spend all of my gems. Um, and then because he is a death random guy, he's actually searching for four different paths, which is pretty good. Uh, means I can cover a lot of different stuff. And then, what else? Um, oh, I rebid the Armored Fist of God. Um, since I already own them, my bid counts for double, so I'm able to buy them back more affordably. And I expect them to survive this throne fight with enough Pikeneers remaining to be worth purchasing, at least for 100 gold. And then I also bid up all the rest of my money on the Fishermen. So these guys are an amphibious group. And given that I'm bordering this province here, which has a huge number of income and is guarded only by tritons, I figure I can try taking over the lake. Um, because there's no naturally amphibious nations in the game, um, I'm going to definitely try to get the most out of my out of these water provinces here. Um, tritons are one of the weaker underwater units uh, in LA. The harder uh, underwater indies like the Shark Tribe and um, most importantly, the Amber Clan Tritons are actually much less common, which means that underwater provinces in general will be easier for me to capture. Um, Tritons uh, don't make great expanders on their own, but they're also easy to beat. So while if I need to recruit them in order to take over underwater provinces, they're not the best, um, it's definitely worth taking. Even just this one province's income is already worth hiring the mercenaries for. Um, while I lost over here, I'm going to be sending this commander back just to go help grab some reinforcements from the capital if necessary, or just uh, chum around there, maybe build a fort somewhere, I don't know. Um, and yeah, that's the turn. Alright, and this is turn 5, late summer. Um, I was actually able to find two magic sites, uh, Smolderstone and Tar Pits, so we got some fire income going already. Um, and then here, we have our smaller expansion party. This is just one turn of capital recruitment. So we have our sacreds here, kept at the back. 
my archers here firing on the heavy cavalry as they advance. Here, the heavy cavalry actually did get first hit, um, but my sacreds are resilient enough in order to actually survive. Um, and once past the initial lance charge, the cavalry aren't doing quite as much damage. The crossbows are still hurting, um, but they're hurting the enemy cavalry as well. And my guys are regenerating. So you can see here, we've already got some afflictions going. So this guy's uh, crippled, so he's moving much more slowly. Um, let's see, these guys all look fine, yeah. And then my crossbows have already started to fire in on these guys. And once these guys get into melee, they're obviously much better than the crossbowmen. Uh, they're still, you know, able to deal some damage with their short swords here. And it looks like they actually even managed to bring one of the blind fighters down. But, eventually, they do rout. So we did lose three of our blind fighters, and these are relatively expensive units. Um, but it's definitely still worth it for taking on the province, and this is, once again, a hard province. Uh, with heavy cavalry and crossmen, many nations would actually try to avoid expanding into them if they could, and just go around it. Um, but because our guys are very good at expanding, they're able to take it on without a problem. Here we have that throne province. We already knew what was on here exactly. But this one has no heavy cavalry, so while there are more units in total, uh, the units who are fighting aren't quite as dangerous. Uh, my thing of luring in the infantry in order to fight them one at a time didn't quite work out. Uh, these guys have javelins, so they prefer to throw them rather than to run into melee. But these guys are taking crossbow fire the whole time, so they're being whittled down before they even get into the fight. As you can see, my uh, pikeneers aren't holding up super well under the crossbow fire. Um, but they're still doing their job in melee, uh, dying so that my troops don't, and doing additional damage, so I'm very glad that I brought them. And luckily, the Indies do wrap. Um, the blind fighters are able to hold up for a couple rounds in combat, enough to force enough morale checks that the Indies eventually fail. So while the Pikeneers did rout, um, and you can see that here, all 19 are gone. Uh, as mercenaries, you don't actually keep them if they run away. Um, the Inquisitor himself stuck around, and all of my troops remained. Uh, meanwhile, I was also able to win the bid for the fishermen here, and I'm going to have them go under underwater. Um, so I met Pythium. This is most likely the remains of his starting army, it looks like. Uh, Pythium is interesting in that they have foreign recruitment, so with the additional resource um, resources that the game settings provide, they should be able to expand very well, um, regardless of whether or not they uh, have taken a bless. Um, and yeah, so I sent him a message, talk shop, talk borders. And then this one uh, looks like just a heavy infantry and militia province, so very easy. So the survivors of this expansion party can take it. Um, and then this group here, I'm having this guy claim the throne. This is the Throne of the Stars, so it's going to provide me some nice astral income. Uh, so very helpful for when I, get to the chan when I get to the point in the game where I have a chance to make astral boosters, golems, that sort of thing. It would be very nice to have. Um, meanwhile, this province here, those archers and heavy infantry, which have uh, twice repelled my expansion parties, uh, they sh definitely should not be able to do the same to these guys, because blind fighters are not simply a Garth and infantry. Uh, meanwhile, um, I've started to recruit these uh, Ketonian necromancers. So, these guys are my elite cap-only mages. Um, they provide deeper access to earth and death magic than I would get otherwise. So, a d3 with an... A Skull Staff can cast Darkness, one of the big battlefield spells that Agarthans love because of our uh, Dark Vision. Uh, the Earth 3 guys with Boots have E4, which enables them to Earth Power up to E5, and that enables stuff like um, uh, Army of Gold or Lead in the very late portions of the game, and E4 if I'm able to, or if I want to burn 4 Earth Gems, I can also cast Earthquake to do some battlefield-wide damage. Um, generally, I wouldn't want to cast that unless I also have a means of protecting my own troops, because these mages are quite expensive. Um, but once blessed up, that actually does provide them with enough HP and protection to have a reasonable chance of surviving an earthquake. Um, and then, of course, they're, because they have that fire random, they're able to fire off Bane Fire, which none of my other units can. Um, and they're able to do Magma Eruption and similar strong evocation. 
So big mages, I like having these guys, and they can also sight search. The Astro Random guys are going to be useful for magic phase movement once I give them two boosters. Um, forging Astro Boosters like Crystal Coins or Starshine Skullcaps once they have one Astro Booster of their own. Um, and then of course just sight searching Astral. Uh, meanwhile, because I am gold capped rather than resource capped, I'm buying one of these Garth and Crossbowmen here. They have the exact same gold price as the Light Crossbowmen, they just require a couple extra resources and they give me some more protection. And then um, I'm buying a full stack of Sacreds again. Uh, so this group here, this blind fighter with these crossbowmen, is going to start expanding up over into this direction. Um, these guys are going to expand over down this way, so I'm basically I'm going to expand as far west as I can go without ca causing any trouble with Pythium. And that's the turn.